All right, everyone, it is time to take a look at Job 14. Let's begin. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And doth thou open thine eyes upon such a one and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of un unclean, not one. So there is some controversy here about whether or not Job is acknowledging the doctrine of original sin. We have paused previously in the study to discuss whether or not Job was in possession of such an idea. The pulpit commentary does not think Job understood this, com uh, this concept. So it is scarcely true to say that the fact of original sin is thus distinctly recognized. Original uncleanness and infirmity are recognized, but the uncleanness is material and removable by material expiation. It is rather man's weakness than his sinfulness that is here under discussion. I think that's an interesting distinction and probably a correct one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? The way Job is speaking here does not communicate a belief or knowledge of an afterlife. The revelation of a resurrection does not appear here, I think. But something does, which we'll get to in a minute. Verse 11, as the waters fail from the sea and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Verse 13, O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. These two verses seem to cause considerable controversy amongst the commentators. Some take them as proof that Job had knowledge of the resurrection. Others phrase it as a hope, a hope for a resurrection and not knowledge. And still others contend that these are largely rhetorical questions that carry with it the negative in implication. I think you could do like a whole like Kierkegaardian existential analysis of this in the book of Job or this chapter, if someone wants to take up that project, the difference between religious knowledge and hope and all this. Verse 15, thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Again, some commentators take this line as definitive proof of the knowledge of resurrection the following seems to have been the most measured response. This is from the Jameson Fawcett Brown Bible commentary, um, implying the utter unlikelihood that God would leave in oblivion the creature of his own hands so fearfully and wonderfully made. It is objected that if Job knew of a future retribution, he would make it the leading topic in solving the problem of his permitted afflictions uh, uh, of, the, of the righteous. We don't see that in these arguments. But one, he did not intend to exceed the limits of what was clearly revealed. The doctrine was then in a vague form only, like a wish, a hope, something kind of intuited. Two, the doctrine of God's moral government in this life, even independently of the future, needed vindication. Verse 16 for now thou numberest my steps, dost thou not watch over my sin? Verse 17, my transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up my iniquity. I thought this was an interesting expression. I had to look it up. I looked at the pulpit commentary. 
God keeps account of all my transgressions. It is as if he put them all into a bag, whence they can be taken out and brought against me at any moment. They are sealed up in the bag of greater security, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. Others think the meaning to be thou addest to my iniquity continually by placing fresh sins to my account. I don't know about that, but... That, that's a whole other can of worms. Verse 18, And surely the mountains falling cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of his place. The waters wear the stones. Thou washest away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. The forces of nature destroy the strongest edifices, and like water against rocks, God can wear down the strongest man. Verse 20, Thou prevailest forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance, and sendest him away. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. I think the idea here is that Job is brought no comfort by whatever happens to his offspring spiritually, since he is facing both the mortality of the body and the soul. All right, till next time.